and thanks for joining us. I'm here with Ms. Terry Phillips, also known as Terry Lou. <laughs> and I um, just wanted to get to know her a little bit and hear about her work. So just to get started, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Terry Phillips. And I am this week's Artist of the Week at the Palmer Museum, which is a great thing and a fun thing for us to do. So um, I've been painting for 40 some years and I'll let Emily ask me questions and go from there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, could you tell us about the work that folks can see at the museum? Um, yes, <laughs> let's see. There's, I, I did put four pieces of, of Wasilla artwork. Um, those, I see so many, so many points from Palmer, you know, like the tower and, and popular places in Palmer that get um, noted in artwork. And of course, I'm from Wasilla, so I just wanted to maybe put a few of the landmarks from Wasilla. So you'll see the caboose, the red caboose that's in, in the park, uh, the city park. There's um, lake, there's one of the lake. Oh, see, this makes me draw a blank because I can't see what's in what I have hanging there to talk about it. New, new, um, is it Newcomb? Do I have that wrong? We'll, we'll figure it out, yeah. Can you see it? Okay, I can't. Anyway, there's one of Wasilla Lake and the park there. Um, there's an old boat out on Knick Road, and that was uh, from the Reddingtons. And it's been out there for years and years. It's an old, it looks like an old shipwreck. And it's just fun to look at that piece because it, it has a lot of history and it has been out there ever since I can remember even being here. And it was out here before we were here. And that's about 35 years ago. And um, there's one more from Wasilla. Let's see, I got the caboose, the lake, Mr. Reddington's boat. Um, it's really hard when you're not looking at what's on the <laughs> on display. <laughs> no problem. We'll leave the last one as a surprise. <laughs> okay, it's there. And also, I have cards representing those, just little correspondence cards that people can pick up and um, they're just minimal, kind of like sending a postcard to somebody. I think I have one of Hawaii palm trees. Um, I've had that one. First of all, where I learned to paint was in Hawaii. And so that was a special time. We were still in the military then and I didn't know a thing about painting. And I just know that the way I got started was a, I, I play piano and there was a lady on the bass who wanted her, her children to take piano lessons. And she was wanting to trade art lessons or painting lessons for a piano lesson. And I, I told her, I, I don't draw, I don't, I just don't, I don't even see that happening. And uh, she said, well, just come over and try it. Just a couple of pieces we'll try. And if you like it, we'll do that. And if not, we'll just not go that route. So I did, and I liked it. <laughs> it was just a lot of fun. And, and there was so much you could do and so much to learn that I, I just had to do it. I was also uh, pregnant with my first child at that time. And... Um, I can remember that when I went into labor, I was trying to paint my grandmother's portrait. Now keep in mind, I, I didn't know much about painting. And when I got home with the baby and I looked at that ugly portrait on the, on the easel, I thought, God, my grandmother would be rolling over in her grave if she saw that. But anyway, um, that was how I got started. Um, let's see. I can't remember if I brought one um, 
I think I took the biggest one home because the space was limited there at the museum. And um, I know I have one of Hatcher Pass of the, uh, the little chalets out there, the little red chalets. And all of these, except for the Hawaii one, they, they've been painted plain air, meaning you go outside and you paint what you're looking at outside. Some of them you take photos of so that you can continue the work at home in the studio because the light always changes. And you definitely need to sometimes fix a few things. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't remember what else is down there. I should have wrote them down so I could have been ready for this, but I just didn't even think about, I didn't think about it. I. <laughs> That's okay. We'll, um, we'll have pictures on Facebook for folks to check out ahead of time, too, if they would like to see. Oh, good. I know that at one point you did post the four from Wasilla. Mm -hmm. So those, those have been out there. People could see those on, on Facebook. But um, I don't know. You're going to post the rest of them, you say? or? Yeah, we'll leave that up to the, the folks that are at the museum to surprise us. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, um, so I guess um, other than the subjects, what kinds of things do you hope to capture in your paintings? Other, like, does that experience? One of the fun things about plain air is you're out there and you're painting and people come around and they start talking to you and they show an interest and then they try to see if you're really capturing what you're after. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think one of those that I brought there was the lilac fields out at Eklutna. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not positive, but I think there's one of those. And so people are familiar with, with the sites and, and it is fun to get to talking to people. Um, I know at one point too, like, I got to hang some paintings over at Vagabond Blues in Palmer. And all the customers in there all made comments. They all spoke with you. They all, I, it really makes you feel good. Like people are actually noticing that you're putting art on the walls and they want to talk about it. And then the best part of all is if you sell one. <laughs> I think that's true for any artist. We kind of kind of like to do a little happy dance if one goes out the door and gets a good home. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, well, can you tell us about the materials you use to make your work? Um. Yes, I, I started with oils and then I still use oils quite frequently. Um, and then I switched to acrylic. Uh, one of the ladies that I also took lessons from in Hawaii. She's passed away now, but she turned us on to acrylics. And, and I clearly remember that she painted an outdoor sink that she had with all kinds of flowers and things in acrylics to test their stamina. So when it rained or there's lots of rain and pouring in Hawaii sometimes, and she would let us know how well those acrylics stood up. And the advantage of those was that they dry right away. You don't wait weeks and months for the layers to dry. They, you, you do have to keep them wet when you're outside by spray painting them or spray water, just constantly spraying water. If you remember to spray the water, you'll be fine. Other than that, if you don't remember to spray the water, your paints are dry and you get flakes and, <laughs> and, and dry little chips of paint where you don't want them. So I do enjoy acrylics and I do enjoy the oils. And I swore I would never try watercolor because um, I don't want to own any more paints. I have so many tubes of paint. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> really easy to get seduced by new media sometimes so <laughs> yeah 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 um let let me see of course your brushes you we all have favorite brushes and it appears that we never throw them away because <laughs> <So, laughs> sometimes a really 
nubby used up brush can have some nice effects on a painting. So, so yeah, just acrylics, oils, water, and brushes. <laughs> well, it sounds like uh, travel has been a real influence on your life in general, but also on your artwork. Could you share a little bit more about places you've been and how you brought them into the work that we can see now? We have traveled extensively, especially our early years, because my husband was in the military, which is why we were in Hawaii in the first place. And um, we've, been, we've been to Texas. I remember this piece is not there because it's long gone, but there was once um, the Texas phone book would show people's artwork on the cover. And, and I, I tried to do a windmill scene that was out in the fields. And it, anything I saw or anything that just even the least bit attracted my attention, I, I would try to paint it. And um, one of the, like coming to Alaska, we used to live in Cold Bay. Now, none of those paintings are here, but that's out on the Aleutian chain. And I actually gave classes there for the adults in Cold Bay, which was part of the university's um, extension classes out there. And I gave classes for painting to several of the ladies there. You have to know there's nothing in Cold Bay. There was no radio, there was no TV, there was hunting. <laughs> yeah, it's very remote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so we did, we did well having just coming over to my house, we'd set up canvases and I'd share my paints and my brushes and just groups of us would paint together and then we'd have a little show <laughs> for for the two hundred people that live there. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of traveling. We've lived in New Mexico. I was born and raised in New Mexico and um there, I have several paintings of that, not necessarily displayed over there at the museum. Um, I'm trying to think, I know there's like a rose, I, there's just a small tiny painting of a rose um, over there at the museum. And it's just because they're so pretty. They're just, a rose is so pretty. So there's nothing special on it, but a rose. And it's a pink one. and you just see something and it just moves you and you think I got to put that somewhere and it's got to go on a canvas so that you can always appreciate it. And, and one of my, I, I have to say this because um, my motto, my motto is everybody should be able to afford an original, even if they're little bitty ones. And sometimes I do little bitty ones that, and turn them into ornaments on little tiny easels. And, and they're very reasonable. It's like $15. And, and people, I know I've, I've seen people in town that just say, I have a Terry Phillips original. <laughs> and, and it's two by two, but it's, it's an original. So, so that's, I, I really do feel that though, even if it's a larger painting, people should be able to afford an original. So I, I don't like to get way out there with prices. Yeah. Well, that's great. It's part of our service to the community almost. Um, <laughs> sharing that with everyone. <laughs> so, well, can you tell us about what's next for you this summer or maybe the rest of the year? I know that a lot of things have changed due to COVID. So all artists are changing their practice in all different ways or all of our schedules have changed. Well, um, normally I'm, I'm, I am on the board of the Valley Fine Arts Association. Mm -hmm. um, last year I was the president and um, I've, I've served at every position on the board, but we always for the last five years have had a retreat, an artist retreat out, out at 12 Mile Lake um, on the Willow side of Hatcher Pass. And we had to cancel that this year because of COVID. And um, 
it's a big letdown because we have a lot of sponsors. We get a lot of donations so that we can give everybody that attends good, good, good prizes, good goodie bags with lots of uh, paint or brushes and different, different items they can use. At any rate, that's been canceled. And um, we do have a, a sort of a potluck picnic type thing coming up at Peters Creek. One of our members has a really nice um, cabin there on Peters Creek, it, it, just outside of Vehicle River. And um, she's invited, they're gonna sell their cabin. So she's invited everybody to have sort of a last fling out there and just bring a potluck and bring your paints and your canvas and you can sit at the creek and have a day, just have a day. And because it's outside, we feel a little safer being far enough apart from each other where we might not have to wear our masks. Sure. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's kind of hard with that COVID coming around all over the place, <laughs> you know? So what is good about it is that even here at home, when you think you're bored or you're like, now what? I'm stuck in the house or anything like that. No, no. Painting takes over and before you know it, the day is done. And <laughs> it's just adding to your collection. <laughs> Excellent. It's so great that you can see a silver lining. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. go ahead. Oh, um, well, I, I was just wondering if there, uh, how can people get in touch with you if they'd like to learn more about your work or Valley Fine Arts Association? We can put some links in the video here. <laughs> and okay. Um, on my own Facebook page, um, I do have sort of an artist page. Uh, if, if you just look for Terry Phillips, you can click on it and you'll see, you'll see the page that takes you right over to the artwork. Um, Valley Fine Arts, yes, we're on there. I'm on all kinds of paint sites that are groups here in the Valley. And um, I, I did put up business cards over there at the museum. And every bit of information is on there. Uh, my phone number, I do commissions and I have taught a few classes, so you know if somebody's interested in learning a little bit, I like to do one-on-one. -on -one. I don't like to teach groups. <laughs> it's, it, it, there's too much um, questions and time gets taken away, and and I would say that a whole lot of what you want to accomplish in a group doesn't get done at my level. So, I I like to teach acrylics. I like for somebody after a lesson to be able to walk away with a painting that they can say, look what I did and, and feel like they want to continue. So all the info is there on my business cards. Um, my phone number is 907-232-4381 and I can be contacted through that anytime. And on Messenger, on Facebook, um, I've, I've, I, oh, and what else is coming up this, like you said, what's in the future here? Um, I'm due to hang at Burger Gyms in July for the month of July. And they have humongous wall space. <laughs> <laughs> so I can bring quite a few pieces of my work and have it there at Burger Gyms for the month of July. And that may help out both of us. You know, it might draw some people in to, to give Burger Jim some business and it might give me some business. So, so we do, yeah, we do try to display locally mm -hmm. at different places, different venues. Wonderful. Well, is there anything else uh, you'd like folks to know before they head over to the museum or know about you as an artist? No, just know that I enjoy talking to people. And if, if I do give a one-on-one -on -one lesson to somebody, it's pretty safe here in my house. And I could keep them six feet away from me. <laughs> and, and they more than likely don't have to wear a mask. And um, 
it, I don't, I don't know what else to say other than if you say to yourself, oh, I could never do that. It's a big lie. You can do it. Um, I am self-taught. And for years I used books to just look and, and try to copy and see if I could learn the colors and that kind of thing like that. Just there, there's a whole lot of rules in art. I found that out that the more educated you got, the more confusing it is because you're trying to remember all these little rules and, <laughs> and, and to create something you don't really need to follow huge rules. You need to just let yourself go. So that, that's my theory. That's a wonderful closing thought. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did this for us. That's really, really nice. And I'm, I'm really pleased to be at the museum. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Terry. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day.